Tate slips inside. Macklemore clears to the other side, and Tate slips out and, and obviously lost his man, and he was wide open. So after the fumble recovery, Oregon takes advantage for the touchdown. Thompson tacks on the 14th point of the game. And Oregon in good shape early, and it will get even better. Bar to pass on a first down play after the kickoff. Vanderson almost had an interception. And then on the next play, second and 10, Barr pressured a little bit, and Chad Cota with his second interception in two weeks. Nice job by Chad uh, sinking back into the middle. He read the Barr's eyes and came up with a big turn takeaway here. It's good pass protection for Barr. Barr just sees he doesn't see Cota come underneath. We've got a defender over the top, but Cota does a nice job hanging on to the ball and getting the turnover. It only takes one play to put it in the end zone. O'Neill steps up, fires, and Deadweiler is behind the secondary and into the end zone for a touchdown from 49 yards out. Very interesting uh, play here, uh, reminiscent of uh, the touchdown that Ronnie Harris got against Cal. You can see O'Neill does a great job coming up underneath the pressure on the play action pass. And Derek Deadweiler just runs right by the Cal defenders, and Danny throws it in there nicely after avoiding the rush. So Thompson now comes in to kick his third extra point in the first 10 minutes of this game. 21 nothing. This, I mean, in a reverse way, reminded me of what happened down there a couple of years ago when they had the big first quarter. Nice play by John Tomopiao, senior from the uh, Bay Area. Makes a tackle on Zumwalt for a loss. Second down and three. Chapman tries that right side and not much there as well. Good pursuit and inside uh, coverage there. See uh, Chapman, no gain. And on third and three, bar is flushed. That's a lateral. It is a lateral. They ruled that Asher had the ball there while he was on the ground. It ended up going out of bounds. You make the call here. We'll have a very, very good look at this one. Missed the sack. Barr makes a, a bad judgment here. He flips it. It is a lateral. He's trying to get it to his back out there. But now Asher, right here, has the ball for an instant. But uh, probably not a very good call by the officials. I don't think he ever controlled the ball while he was on the ground. Unfortunately, after the turnover, unable to put it in the end zone, and ooh, hit the pipe, and it goes through for Tommy Thompson. He's a billiards player. 39-yard <laughs> field goal at the end of the first quarter. It's 24 to nothing, and I think there were about 35,000 fans in attendance. They're kind of going like this. What in the world's going on? Well, when we come back, we will have the second quarter highlights, so stick with us. As we enter the second quarter, Oregon is leading 24 to nothing, and they're going to expand upon that lead momentarily. But first, Cal with a football on the first possession of the second quarter. Bar flushed. Jeremy Asher runs him down. Another sack for Asher. He uh, had a very impressive football game. Roll out here. Anderson kind of got his leg grabbed a little bit, but uh, Asher comes on secondary contain and makes the tackle for a six-yard loss. And so on third and four, Barr back, and there's number 44 again, getting some help from David Massey. Blitz again against their two-back set. They were really not very well prepared for this. Uh, and then they started spreading the formation, and we didn't do a very good job of covering. Asher kind of missed that tackle. He was the first one there, but Massey uh, came into securing. The old headlock on. So Oregon gets it back, leading 24-0. Neal. Nice job of getting out of the pocket there and completing the ball to Deadweiler. Gets that left foot inbound. Good protection. The coverage was good over on the left side, and Danny came back to the right side and found Derek improvising with a little out route for a 13-yard game. And then the same two will connect on the next play from the 35-yard line. This one, he really does a nice job of splitting the scene. Stumbled almost took it all away, but a real nice uh, catch and reception by Derek. See good protection here and a slant pass to uh, Deadweiler, and he breaks a tackle. Oop! Stumbles trying to break another one. And then on first and ten, a little uh, fool duggery. Kristen McLemore, former high school quarterback, 
So Willie Tate for the touchdown, and that is our play of the day. Well, that's uh, just simply called a double pass, Todd. Uh, we uh, line up the tight end, Tate, to this side. We're split here, single back. We had uh, Derek Deadweiler here and Kristen McLemore wide, number six. And it has to be a lateral pass. The, the pass has to go backwards. So O'Neill, as you'll see uh, on the replay, takes a, a very short one and a half step drop and fires the pass back. McLemore fakes like he's going downfield, comes back deep. So the pass is caught as a lateral. Derek Deadweiler blocks for him. And Willie slams this man and then goes to the corner and as the people react to the quick screen, which is a play we basically opened up, the quick pass we've thrown quite a bit, McLemore just calmly throws it to Willie Tate, who's wide open in the corner of the end zone. Double pass, touchdown. Here it is on the replay. You can see the pass is a lateral. Derek Deadweiler really doesn't even need to block. They hold up tight, and, and uh, Willie's behind everybody, and McLemore, just like in his old quarterback days in high school, just threw a beauty right in there. That was uh, very nice looking. Tate's second touchdown of the game, and then uh, Doink. And the ball did not go in the pocket this time. One of the uh, few misses that he's ever had, other than I think his very first attempt. Uh, you might be right. Uh, so, unfortunately, it's only 30 nothing. And we allow them to get good field position on the, on the ensuing kickoff. They complete a pass there. We get great pressure here, and Jeremy Asher comes in for the sack. You can see again, we're blitzing in their two back set. Massey and Asher coming up inside. Barr tries to scramble out of there. We've got uh, contained by Isaac Walker on the backside. He had nowhere to go. And then uh, an unfortunate play coming up here, third and 20. And the ball is thrown into the end zone. It is ruled pass interference on Dante Lewis. This is a good call. He played the man. He actually hit the man. The ball hit him in the back of the helmet. Had he played the ball, he could have had the interception. It would have been incomplete. Second down, they score. Lindsey Chapman over for the touchdown. And so California gets on the board. It's 30 to 7. And we still have six minutes to play in the second quarter. Ricky Whittle, a couple of series later, with under three minutes to play, breaks it outside for 12. Ricky started to, to run pretty aggressively near the end of the first half, and I thought he ran extremely well in the second half. Nice straight arm there. That's vintage Ricky Whittle. Shedrick gets a nice block out in front of him. We had a few spectators that were looking like they wanted to block but didn't in front of him there. Well, Juan took out two guys on that play, so he made up for that. Second down and five. O'Neill pass near side. Great catch by Deadweiler. And then on first and 10 from the 49, in the seam, number eight again. That one was good for 22 yards. Good pass protection. O'Neill's got a pocket and throws in the seam against the zone defense. Nice job by Derrick. So now time is running a little bit short. You're trying to get some kind of points out of this drive, hopefully in the end zone. Again, this time Kristen McLemore with the reception. I think there's 34 seconds left on the clock as we throw this screen. We have one timeout left. Uh, should have taken that play outside. I think he might have scored if he had. Uh, and now we don't get lined up. We don't look at the clock. We don't realize what's going on. And we totally mess this up and don't even get a field goal attempt off as that pass ends the half. Yeah, that's a real shame because even though the score is 30 to 7 in the Ducks field, very comfortable with that lead as it proved out to, there were never enough points on this day for either team. When we come back, we will have a special feature. We'll hear from Juan Shedrick, the senior fullback. Ready for the third quarter. Oregon will get the football to start the third period of play and uh, first offensive drive. Coach, I know you wanted to uh, regain that momentum and uh, unfortunately, just uh, didn't quite happen as you go up top early, intended for McLemore and then on second down, the running play to Burwell. Just tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but does get three. This is uh, probably the worst thing that could have happened to us coming out at the half. We wanted to move the football and go down a score, but we end up three downs and out. Incomplete pass to Tate. Two of the three were passes. Uh, uh, we now punt the ball away, and Cal, on their very first play, 
Throws a little screen out here, and I think Chad Cota got clipped right there, but it was not called. We missed one tackle. We missed two tackles, and it's a touchdown. It's uh, just a real bad play by our defense. We're in a normal defense, and we missed two tackles. And uh, didn't have people running to the ball, I don't think, as well as we should have. And we give up an easy, cheap touchdown. Come back and go to that option series again. Nice job by blocking. Derek Deadweiler, I think, did some nice uh, things other than catching the ball. He made some very key blocks in the secondary. Shedrick breaks uh, out on the dive, picks up a nice gain. First and 10, O'Neal. Boy, this is just a wonderful throw and catch. Nice job by uh, McLemore. Uh, not quite enough room on the sideline, but it was thrown over the outside shoulder away from the defender. Nice protection. A pocket for Danny to step up in, and he throws the ball over McLemore's outside shoulder. He's well covered. Uh, we're not the only ones that get beat by uh, good throws and good receivers. First time play, Shedrick again banging it up in there. Picks up eight. After picking up the first down, first and 10 at the Cal 13-yard line. Nice block by Shedrick and a nice block by Steve Harden clearing the way for Burwell to go into the end zone. See Harden driving his man clear down the field, and Burwell takes it in. So we answered the, the Cal touchdown, and things looked like that they were back to normal. So then Cal gets it back floater and uh, you know, sometimes you just can't cover it much better than you are. We were in good shape. We just didn't get the ball out. Caldwell made a nice catch. Now Barr goes deep again, thrown over the outside shoulder. And uh, Alex went for the ball, didn't get his hand on the receiver. And it is a easy touchdown. So now they decide to go for two and this pass is incomplete. So it's 38 to 20 and at this point people are uh, trying to go find their pocket calculators. And unfortunately, big play here because it uh, really puts Cal back into the game from a numbers standpoint. The block, Eric Zomot gets the touchdown and the point after. And now it's 38 to 27 with, this is unbelievable, plenty of time left to go, but uh, not much offense uh, remaining in the third quarter. So with all the highlights coming up in the fourth quarter, we figured we'd bag that. And we'll get into the fourth quarter highlights in a moment. <laughs> Strap on your seatbelts into the fourth quarter we go. Uh, Oregon continues to lead, but it gets wild and woolly. We pick up action. Oregon has the football. And you know every series is key in a football game. And uh, you look back at this one as being one of those key series. Deadweiler with a long pass reception. And caught from behind by Deron Cherry after a 77-yard game. This is a big play. Uh... Nice pass, we split the uh, terrible tackle by the Cal corner. And we're in the open with about a three yard lead, but watch the Cal defender close. The old Satchel Page line, don't look back, somebody might be gaining on you. And Deadweiler caught from behind, first and 10 at the 11. Key Whittle, almost got in. Get down to the one and a half yard line. We're just a foot short of a first down. So it's third down and one. We try to sneak, which has been successful for us, and we get rejected on this one. So fourth and one from the two. You can still get a first down. And he said he'd like to have this one back. Uh, hope they'll put a little more juice on it. The play was there, uh, but he had a guy coming in his face. He had to loft it up over as well. Uh, but uh, it was open. We didn't get the job done. And in retrospect, I'd like to have kicked the field goal. Now we get uh, good pressure here, and Coda ends up getting the sack. So you get it, get it back. You still have the lead. They're trying to run some time, trying to score again. Good hard run by Burwell. Gets eight. And Ricky Whittle. Bounces it to the outside. Cuts. And he's gone for 44. Delivering a blow of his own on the way. Look at it again. Nice hole there. Good job by Tom Kern. Uh, Justin Stark at the point of attack. Whittle makes the cutback and 
takes it up the sideline for his longest run of the year. So the Ducks in great position right now. They have the ball. This will be a second down play from the 19. The option again, Burwell. And he has got the ball down inside the 10 yard line. The option pitch again on the corner. Burwell turns it up the field for first down. Derek Deadweiler had a nice block on that play as well. Next play we see third and goal from the four. Danny throws it. Boy, bang, bang. Is it a touchdown? Is it a reception? Is it incomplete? See uh, running uh, McLemore over the middle. The ball's there. I believe the ball's out before he's down. Incomplete. So kick the field goal. From a number standpoint, this looks like a good decision. Puts you up by two touchdowns and two one-point conversions. And there's less than seven minutes to play, but this is a this killer. Is killer rain. One play, 72 yards, three deep zone. Uh, we allowed Barr to step up in the pocket with a lot of time to throw. He looked off to his left, came back to the right, and we uh, were totally out of position with our corner and our safety. 41-34 with a little over five minutes to play. Watch the uh, delivery of the hit here by Ricky Whittle. Oh, man, I tell you. Nice block on that uh, at the point of attack again by Juan Shedrick. It springs Ricky around the corner. You'll see it. Watch 24 right there. Cut the towel defender down. Whittle makes the cut up inside. Derek Deadweiler again made a nice block on the outside. And Ricky Whittle uh, delivers rather than receives. Cool. So with that play, it appears that you've done, you know, a lot of things you wanted to do. Field position. You move the ball into Cal territory. Oh, and then you give yourself three more downs. Good shape there with Shedrick. Hit, now Shedrick hits it inside, There's puts his one. arm down, and breaks his arm. So that sets up a third down and three. After a timeout to uh, take care of Shedrick. And Whittle is stopped by Willard short of the first down. Fourth and one. We elect to kick the ball away, and we have Cal backed up quite a ways. We lose contain. This is a big play. Third and ten. We lose contain on the quarterback, and they convert the first down. I, I agree with you. That big, was a big, big, big play. That keeps them alive. Moves the ball out to the 33, and now Barr gets into a rhythm. They start throwing underneath. That's Semyon, gain of 11. And then Barr again eludes some pressure, and will pick up eight on the scramble. Lose contain again. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. We are under two minutes to play. Trap play almost breaks cleanly. Rockwell and Ernest Jones on the tackle. Cal trailing by seven, so they have to get into the end zone. The out pattern, Semyon again, a gain of 11. And then after a gain of three and a timeout, from the 26, Barr goes upstairs, corner of the end zone. Ihani Uwezuke with the reception for the score. So now Cal is within one. They've got to have a two-point conversion. And they audibleize here. Decide to go to the fade route in the corner. And it's Mike Caldwell with the reception. The two-point conversion is good and almost as important a penalty against Oregon for pass interference. That means that Cal not only has the lead, but they'll kick off from the 50. It doesn't give you a chance to return. Well, it doesn't. It, uh, they kick it off deep uh, out of there, and we start on our 20-yard line. Well, the way this game is gone, though, 117 appears to be plenty of time to move the football and get something. You see Danny O'Neill keeps, gains five. I think you had two timeouts. We had uh, two timeouts. To work with. On a third and five play, there's Deadweiler again. His 11th reception of the day takes the ball out to the 43. 43 yard line, uh, nice, nice pass here and on the slant route. We uh, get a, a procedure penalty on the next play, so we go back to the 37 yard line. And then on the, that second down and 15 play, Danny is really only Real bad throw of the day. It's overthrown. Cal intercepts, and that's the ball game. 
So California with a miraculous comeback, the largest comeback in the history of Pac-10 football and a very dejected Oregon sideline, the final play of the game. And California comes away with its second conference victory of the year. Let's take a look at the, some of the numbers. They are eye-popping when you talk about offensive numbers. First downs, Oregon with the 28, rushing 281, passing 333, 614 in total offense. Uh, incredible performance. Dave Barr threw for 368 for California. They uh, had a rough time running the ball most of the afternoon. Flip the page, you see turnovers, 3 to 1. The Ducks plus 2 in that category. The punting, that includes the blocked punt. Third down conversions, very good for Oregon once again. Six sacks. Cal had allowed only four total going into the ball game. Individually, Danny O'Neill once again over that 300-yard mark throwing the football. Barr also threw for over 300 yards. O'Neill 17 out of 33. Three touchdowns and that one pick. Barr a great day as well. Whittle and Burwell both over the 100-yard mark. Second year in a row that Whittle has topped that century mark against California. And defensively, the coach has already alluded to the fact that uh, you see the receiving Deadweiler with the record there, but the Jeremy Asher with a solid game. Three and a half sacks, five tackles, and Chad Cota leading the way with six total. After the game, we talked to some of the players. I guess, you know, Kyle was just playing better at the time as we were, and we just weren't stepping up, you know, making plays like we did the first half. And they just kept throwing the short passes. You know, we lost contain. I lost contain in one play and just kept them moving the ball. We've practiced it for two years now almost, and we wanted to run. It's been in the game plan, and they scratch it or we don't run it. And uh, called it. Danny said, just, you know, step and throw, Chris. Willie and I have, you know, Willie and I practiced that a lot, so it was cool. Once I saw him open, kind of brought back, you know, a couple old memories. It was fun. It was something was a change-up, but I wish I would have I would have gave up that one just to catch the one in the end zone. I, uh, that one's on me. We was executing well in the first half. In the second half, it seemed like they just made big plays. It, they really didn't uh, do too much difference. They just made big plays, and it hurt us. They blocked the punt, and uh, they got a couple deep throws downfield for touchdown, and, uh, you know, it hurt us. I thought we were going to come in the second half and blow them out, but it turned around on us. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but that's why we're going to come back next week strong and get USC. It's pretty heartbreaking because um, we tried real hard in practice, and we tried real hard in the game, and it just seemed like they kept coming back. And we got um, a 30-point lead at halftime, and, um, you know, the guys came in kind of like, well, we got the game all around, and everybody was saying, what about Wake Forest and Montana when they kept coming back? And, um, you know, we tried to keep the momentum coming, but it never came back. I don't know what to say. I don't think there's any reason. I think uh, the reason why we lost is because they played a good game. Uh, I don't think it was because we played a bad game. I think one of the things that might be important for your team as well would be to have that home field advantage back to uh, have a big crowd to get them behind your football team. Well, it would be. Uh, it'd be nice to fill up Boston Stadium and, and have it rocking and have people uh, supporting the Ducks and uh, that confidence that ebbed and flowed in the game at Cal. Uh, we need to, to regain it at home uh, this Saturday. Remember, 337 start, the, the Ducks and the Trojans. We'll see you next week. The Rich Brooks Show is a production of the Oregon Sports Network.